Hello, I'm Rob George. This is the introductory video for the international rights of the child. I want to give you a short introduction to the topic generally and give you an idea about what you'll be studying. Children's rights, both domestically and more specifically in an international context, is a fascinating and diverse topic. I love teaching and researching in this area and thinking about how it overlaps with other important contemporary issues about children, families and human rights. The topics which you will explore in this subject are all at the cutting edge of contemporary international issues. Refugee and asylum seeking children, the protection of children from trafficking and sexual exploitation, children in the youth justice system, children's rights in relation to education and many more. You will investigate the ways in which a children's rights framework can be relevant to addressing these pressing issues in children's lives, considering the theoretical and practical ways in which children's rights can inform or assist children in both extreme situations and in their everyday lives. I'll explain more about these topics when I introduce you to each of the modules. As its name suggests, this subject is focused on the international law relating to the rights of children, though you will also consider how that international law compares to and interconnects with domestic legal systems. Most of the reading that you'll do is about international law, but some is about domestic legal systems. The reading in relation to domestic law focuses on the position in England and Wales, but that is just a case study, and you're encouraged to think about other legal systems with which you may be familiar and draw on your own examples. The focus of the course is about children and children's lives, analysed through an international human rights, and more specifically children's rights, lens. However, while we're focused on children, which is generally taken to mean all people under the age of 18, Real life and human rights instruments which relate to it often don't draw such sharp lines. So we're also interested in parents and families, in the ways that children interact with professionals like doctors or teachers, and the ways in which children interact with the state, such as courts or immigration services. You'll also look critically at the idea of what it means to be a child and at the concept of childhood, asking how that fits into the idea of children's rights. Is there and should there be a distinct concept of children's rights and why does that question itself matter? Some students taking this course have studied human rights or child and family law before. If you have that's great but the course does not assume that you have any knowledge of these issues before you start and there will be plenty of material to give you a solid introduction regardless of your previous studies. As with all subjects you will need to read around the topics to give yourself the best chance of gaining a full understanding and therefore doing well. The course materials will help you to do this. Because children's rights is a fast moving area, there's no one book that you'll be asked to use as a textbook. You will however see regular reference to the Routledge International Handbook on Children's Rights Studies, which offers short, thought-provoking introductions to many of the key children's rights issues which you'll be studying. The main readings in each topic set out what it's essential for you to read and also provide you with additional material as well. Most of these materials come from journal articles, particularly the International Journal of Children's Rights, which obviously has a special relevance to this course, as well as book chapters, court decisions, and research and policy papers from governments and NGOs. These are all excellent pieces, and you're really encouraged to immerse yourself in them, asking critical questions and thinking about how different pieces of the literature interconnect. Beyond the main reading, you'll also find in the introductory notes to each module that you're given links to various other sources of information about contemporary issues to do with children's rights. For example, the website of the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, or the website of the Child Rights International Network. These organisations also have Twitter feeds, which offer really cutting edge information. And of course, the topics on which you'll be studying are very much live issues, so you'll often find news stories which relate closely to the material you're studying. All these sources will help you to explore the course and gain a deeper understanding of the issues. Inevitably, there's an element of simply learning things as part of this course so that you have a basic knowledge of the subject in order to talk about it in an informed and meaningful way. But the focus of your studies is not so much on memorising laws, facts and figures, so much as it is on learning how to use children's rights as a framework to think critically about issues affecting children. The materials you're given in the study guides, together with your own examples and experiences, will help you to ask critical and challenging questions about children's lives and the situations in which children find themselves, some mundane, some life-threatening.
many in between. You can use that material then to see if and how a children's rights analysis can be of assistance in understanding the challenges faced by children globally. There are four modules within this course. In Module A, you'll study the theoretical issues and children's rights mechanisms which give an underpinning to the course as a whole. This module gives you an opportunity to ask about the idea of a child and of childhood. You'll look at the ways in which the idea of the child has developed over time, give you a chance to think about how the idea of children's rights might be influenced by the definition and conception of what a child is in the first place. You'll also study the history connected to children's rights. In doing so, you'll see the connections between a children's rights discussion and a broader human rights theory and debates within which children's rights discourse sits. This work will give you a clear understanding to inform your studies in the later modules. Module A also introduces you to the main sources of children's rights, divided into three topics. The first is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child of 1989, which is the most widely adopted human rights mechanism ever. Almost every country in the world has signed and ratified this convention, with the key exception of the United States of America. So you'll also have the chance to think about why the US has not adopted the convention. The second topic in relation to sources of children's rights looks at regional mechanisms which relate directly or indirectly to children. These include the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, the Inter-American Convention on Human Rights, and the European Convention on Human Rights. Finally, we take our case study jurisdiction of England and Wales and ask about children's rights and how they're recognised and protected in domestic law. In Module B, you'll read about the so-called core principles of children's rights as drawn from the UN Convention. Four of the rights identified and protected under the Convention have been highlighted by the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child as being the core principles. These are found in Articles 2, 3, 6 and 12 of the Convention. At this point, it may seem difficult to imagine knowing the numbers of various provisions within the Convention, but most people find that as you study it, these things start to stick in your memory, so don't worry. Article 2 is the non-discrimination principle, that children should not be discriminated against or, perhaps more importantly, between. So, girls should not be treated more or less favourably than boys, disabled children should not be treated more or less favourably than non-disabled children, and so on. Article 3 is the best interest principle, which says that in all actions concerning children, their best interests must be a primary consideration. If you've studied domestic family law before, you probably recognise the idea of a best interests principle, but Article 3 is slightly different, so you'll have a chance to explore that. Article 6 of the Convention is referred to as the right to life, survival and development, and so is obviously essential for any of the other rights under the Convention to be relevant. Finally, but perhaps most interestingly, is Article 12, which is about children's participation rights. This is one of the Convention's most progressive elements, and you'll spend two topics exploring the general principles and some specific examples of children's participation rights. Module C and D go together, in that both of them are about exploring children's rights and how they can play out in relation to particular issues affecting children's lives. The topics within Module C focus on children as they interact with elements of the state in one way or another. The first two topics are about children and their families, and the ways in which the state affects children's family relationships and children's identities. The first of those topics addresses questions of children's right to know their genetic origins, while the second is about adoption and children's identity rights in that context. Module C then continues to consider three connected topics in the broader public sphere – children's participation in the labour market, children's education, and children and religion. These topics are connected, and you'll be actively encouraged to think about those connections as you study them. Module D focuses on different aspects of what might be broadly seen as child protection, though as you'll see that label is not entirely satisfactory. Topic 1 within this module looks at children's interactions with the juvenile justice system, asking critical questions about the balance between maintaining public order when children are accused of or commit criminal offences, and the rights of individual children involved. Topic 2 picks up one of the UNCRC's optional protocols and addresses the difficult issue of child exploitation, the sale of children and child pornography. You'll consider issues like child trafficking and child sex tourism 
and the challenges that are presented by developments in technology. The third topic has some potential overlap with the second, but also raises quite distinct issues as you study the question of street children. As with many of the topics that you study, the language used here is disputed, but children who are on or of the street face particular challenges, and you'll explore the ways in which a children's rights analysis may assist. Topic four relates to one of the most geopolitically important topics of recent years, namely refugee and asylum-seeking children. It's difficult to think of an area where a children's rights analysis might be more pressing than this. Finally, in Module D, you'll look at another of the UNCRC's optional protocols, this time on children and armed conflict. The typical image of a child soldier is of a teenage boy with a gun, but as you'll see, there is much more diverse range of ways in which children become involved with armed conflict, and the challenges they face are significant. So I hope that this introductory talk has given you a good flavour of what this course is about, and I hope that it's inspired you to start your studies in this fascinating and evolving area. The subject fits very well with other human rights papers of all kinds and to jurisprudence, and also with studies of the law relating to the family, to private and public international law, and to many others. It fits well within a general LLM as well, giving you the ability to bring a fresh and original perspective, that of children and their rights, to other areas where children are often overlooked. Thank you for listening and enjoy the course.